My name is Yupari and I'd like to welcome you into my studio today to guide you along the process involved in creating this oil painting of a still life. And I'm going to keep the still life itself to the left of my painting throughout the entire video so you can refer to it as I develop the painting. I'm going to start off by diluting a brush with just a little bit of odorless and mineral spirits. And I'm going to use raw umber as my drawing color. Before we get into this, let's talk about the color palette. So I'm going to be using titanium white, raw umber, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, cadmium orange, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, sap green, cobalt teal, ultramarine blue, and ivory black. So I'm working on a standard 11 by 14 inch panel, and we're going to be doing a still life of these flowers. So this brush is diluted with a little bit of odorless mineral spirits. So the reason it's diluted with a little bit of odorless mineral spirits is so that I can easily move the paint around somewhat like charcoal. Now sometimes I'll apply a thin wash of odorless mineral spirits so that the brush can move even more freely. Uh, but this time I just decided to just uh, put the brush in a little mineral spirits and then start to draw. And so I'm going to start off with some basic proportions. I'm just thinking of the placement of the uh, still life. So if this is my lowest point of that little jug, and this is the highest point. Now I could do a sight size. So this would be an example of a sight size technique. So you hold the brush like this, and then you match it onto here. Or you can use a horizontal if you want to directly get the proportions using sight size. But I want to make the jug a little bit larger than it appears to me, so I won't be using sight size per se. So this is somewhat the proportion of the jug, or the vase, or whatever you want to call it. So here's the top of the flower mass. And so let's just think about big masses. Let's forget about the uh, flowers and all of that. Uh, detail, we'll get into that uh, kind of stuff later, but for now let's just do simple straight lines and angles just to get an idea of the entire composition. So I think it's important to, uh, especially with a still life, to consider the composition fairly early on and uh, maybe in the first few minutes or so just have uh, brush marks indicating the entire design of the picture, just abstract shapes. And so what I mean by abstract shapes is this is just a basic rectangular shape, and this is just a basic uh, circular looking shape. And then I chose to put the flower, uh, the still life with the flowers, a little bit lower on the panel. I didn't want to center it, and I didn't want it to be too high up. So I chose to put it a little bit lower. So if this is about where I want the entire placement to be, let's think about the center line of the still life. So it's going to be important to have a center line for the still life object that you're painting. This would be a nice time to have a T-square, if you have access to a T-square. But I don't have a T-square handy, so I'm just going to kind of eyeball this uh, vertical line. I'm using the edge of the panel to get, give me some type of vertical line. And the next thing you're going to want with a uh, still life object such as this is to figure out the outside shape. So if this, is going, this is going to be an axis, kind of like with a portrait. Uh, so this is going to be a little axis telling me the peak of convexity for this curve, peak of convexity being the highest point of the curve. So I think it's about here that this is the highest point. It's not exactly a sphere. So it's, its highest point is about here. And let's construct curves using straight lines and angles. Now I don't know if this is perfectly centered yet, um, but just by eye I'm just kind of loosely sketching in the proportions. So here's a little angle here. And then the bottom of the vase, we can just use these little kind of straight lines, just little geometric chops. 
Kind of like a sculptor would do if they were going to sculpt this out of clay. They would probably use just simple straight lines and angles, simple straight chops. So here's the bottom of the vase. Now the bottom of the curve is somewhat here, but I'm kind of exaggerating it. And it is covered with the fabric. So let's just keep the sketch rather loose in the beginning. Now it's going to be important to focus on the light and shadow shapes. And so very early on I'm going to make some indications for the shadow shape, the entire shadow pattern. So we have something coming about like this, making, a, making an angle in this kind of direction. So this shadow here is being casted by this uh, flower this flower mass. Very simple and very abstract. See the shadow pattern that's being casted from that leaf. Let's see, so this angle cuts into here and the jug. So let's use some straight lines and angles. So it's cutting in somewhat like that. So that's why there's an angle here to the shadow because this is curving around. Something like that. So let's go ahead and just mass in the shadow now. So it helps to have a value. So this is going to be just a simple light and shadow block in. So here's the corner of the little curve here. And here's another corner. And it's all right if the drawing is even a little bit off or a lot. Uh, we're going to come back in with paint and further correct the drawing. So I'm going to use a little piece of paper towel that I just ripped off to construct the bottom of the jug. So I'm going to apply a little bit of mineral spirits onto this uh, little piece of paper towel. So now you see that it's subtracting, uh, kind of like a kneaded eraser would for, uh, say, a charcoal drawing. So this comes out somewhat in this kind of angle. And that is called uh, subtracting the paint comes out to here. So again, let's just have a simple shape for the shadow, nothing overly complicated. Now let's get into the flowers. Now we're going to use a subtractive method to draw out the flowers. So I'm going to use a brush and apply uh, just the raw umber. I'm going to add a little bit of mineral spirits to it. Not a lot, just a tad bit, maybe 2% uh, mineral spirits. So we're going to use this raw umber to help out with the drawing. And we're just going to look at abstract shapes. So here's one little portion of the flower, this little leaf coming down here. And try not to perfectly draw out a flower. Um, rather, just look at the large masses, the large abstract masses that make up uh, the overall design of the flower. So here's. I'm just going to unify this entire dark here now, and it really helps to squint down, especially at a stage like this. Squinting helps to eliminate uh, details and just see the big picture. So when I'm squinting down, I just see this light mass here and this mass here. Maybe a little spot there. That's all I'm seeing when I'm squinting down. And let's put something in for the background. I want to be able to get an idea of just flat shapes, flat patterns of light and dark before I get caught up uh, with anything else. Just patterns of light and dark. So let's just fill that in there. So this comes in about here, cuts out right about there. And again, the drawing is going to be further uh, figured out with the colors. We're just trying to get a uh, big picture in check. We're just trying to work with these big simple masses. Here's a little corner. Just simple masses. And make sure to stand back or to sit back uh, and see what the entire picture looks like at a distance. So that's really what uh, you want to read 
you want you want it to read at its best from a distance. I'm gonna go ahead and keep covering. I'm gonna use a little more mineral spirits. And when I get into color, yes, I know that there's going to be some raw umber there, uh, but that's all right. I'm going to be using uh, quite a bit of paint. So uh, the color that I do apply onto this will not be affected that much uh, by this raw umber color that I'm placing. Now see how very quickly we should be able to get an idea of what this image will look like when we further, uh, as we further develop the shapes. See, just by the simple application of light and dark, let's unify even all of this. Remember to keep squinting. Now I'm going to think about some of the foliage here. So this maybe comes in and makes a little rectangle like this. Uh, maybe this comes down to about here. Maybe this comes out there. Perhaps there's a little fold here, the little fold that's wrapping over uh, the, the glass. There's a little foliage over here. And then, of course, the dark shape right back here. I'll tell you what, let's start to get into color now that we have a basic understanding of where we want the placement of the still life to be. So the most important thing is simple shape and placement. So I'm switching to a different brush now and I'm going to use a combination of a little bit of cadmium yellow, a tad bit of sap green, and maybe a little bit of raw umber and let's throw in a touch of the cadmium orange. Maybe some cobalt teal. Now this gray tone that was underneath the panel is going to help me out in terms of the values. Now if I were working on uh, just white, then it might be uh, a little difficult for me to cover all of the white and then white on its own notice how bright this is uh, so white on its own is kind of uh, kind of it makes it difficult to gauge what your values are so it's kind of better to work in a middle tone like this and the easiest way to think about it is uh, you want your lights to look light and your darks to look dark so let's use some uh, let's use some cobalt teal so let's just make this little shape here. Very simple. I'm just making this bottom area a little bit more blue. I perceive it to be a tad bit more on the blue side. And again, just simple shapes. So now switching to a different brush, I'm going to get a color now for the uh, cast shadow of this still life object. So I'm going to use ultramarine blue, raw umber, a little bit of alizarin crimson, and maybe some more cobalt teal. Still kind of squinting down to get an idea of the way that the values will work. So here we have this very definitive shadow shape here. So I'm going to be moving the brush uh, horizontally, especially for the darks. And that that is to eliminate or to trying to eliminate the glare. So I get a pretty bad glare on my camera if I if I move the paint kind of like this way or this way. So usually it's easier to move it like in a horizontal fashion. So here we have the basic shadow shape for the still life object. Let's put a little shadow down here. Uh, so we want this to follow the form. So it's kind of curving around. See that? It's curving around with the form. Now with the same brush, I'm going to get into the uh, a little more alizarin crimson and a tad bit of ultramarine blue maybe a little more alizarin crimson and there's a big dark mass right here as the uh, you're starting to see a little bit of the back side 
of the still life object. So here's a little bit of uh, dark tone over here. Now I'm going to clean off the brush just a little bit with the, my odorless mineral spirits. Now I'm going to switch to a different brush. And I'm going to start to paint in a value for the background. So let's think about uh, let's use a little bit of ultramarine blue, a touch of alizarin crimson, a nice little velvety purple, but I don't want it to be too purple, so I'm going to add ivory black. Now, I don't want it to be too black, so I'm going to add a little bit of raw umber. So raw umber is a nice color to add into ivory black, just to make sure that you don't get uh, straight black. Anything that's straight black will tend to jump out at you. And even though in the camera it may seem that all of this is blacked out, I assure you that it's not. So here we have a little corner now. I notice the direction of the brush stroke kind of uh, may be creating a glare. Not entirely sure. So here I'm going to start off with the corners. So here we have the corner of the still life object. And now let's just fill this in. So let's use a little more ivory black, ultramarine blue, and raw umber. Maybe a little more ultramarine blue. Now let's look at the back side here. And again, we're going to be further uh, constructing the drawing uh, with the color now. Uh, a little more ivory black, a little more ultramarine blue. I'm going to use a touch of my medium now, just a tiny amount. So my medium is one part stand oil to four parts mineral spirits, and that you can create uh, if you'd like. You can even create it with just a little teaspoon of stand oil and a teaspoon of the mineral spirits, though I don't recommend eating it or anything like that. So if you don't want to use a teaspoon, you can use any kind of measurement you want. So let's start to add in now the outside shape. So let's construct a little more of an outside shape for the flowers. And this comes out maybe about here, I'm fairly sure. This comes out to here. Now I'm going to switch to a brush, a different brush, and I'll use this one. Let's say, let's use the one that we cleaned off earlier. Uh, let's place a red, a simple red for the foreground. So let's mix into this puddle. So I'm going to use a little bit of a lizard and crimson on top of this mixture that was already there and some cadmium red. So let's just create this dark value and I'm going to start off kind of in the middle so a little bit darker than I would want it to be and that is so I can come back and add lighter colors or darker colors if I'd like. Kind of useful to start in the middle. So let's just fill this in now. And already I see that this area needs to be a little bit darker. So let's go back to the alizarin crimson. So let's just use alizarin crimson and ivory black. Just these two for now. See if we can get this, uh, this value to work. So now I'm going to clean off the brush again. I'm going to get a combination of greens now for this mass here. So I'm really squinting down to see uh, what these masses look like. And it's going to be really important, especially uh, with flowers or any kind of foliage that has layers upon layers of objects, uh, to try not to build each uh, flower, little fold like that individually. I mean, you can if you, if you really want to. That's perfectly fine, but 
I'm going to just go ahead and just put in a mask of how I see it squinting or blurring my eyes. So this, it really helps if you uh, have prescription glasses or if you're nearsighted or something. So just put your glasses down and then you'll be able to see just color, just simple shapes of color. So that's what I'm doing now. Just placing in simple shapes of color. Maybe a little bit of dark here. And now switching to a different brush. I'm going to make some warmer colors for this area here. And so this technique uh, that I'm showing you is more of a direct painting technique, uh, meaning you're painting uh, wet layers of oil paint upon wet layers of oil paint. Now this may not be the way to approach it if you were using uh, watercolor or say acrylics, uh, just because of the nature that they have to dry really fast. But oil paint, I tell you, oil paint is really forgiving. And it stays wet for a long time, depending on what medium you use. So that's why I use a little bit of stand oil into my mixture, because stand oil is a slow dryer. And remember, I only use just a little bit of it. So let's get a little pink here now. And again, this is just to lay in a mass, just to get an idea of the way that the shapes are going to look. And again, I'm going to make it a little bit maybe darker or on the middle on the value scale just so that I have room either to make the shapes lighter or to make the shapes darker. So this mass here I perceive it to be a little bit lighter so this mass looks a little lighter than this mass here so I'm going to add uh, some let's add some cadmium yellow and more of the titanium white. Now if you've seen my previous videos with portraiture I tend to use lead white and opaque or sorry a transparent white mostly for portraiture but if I'm doing still life or landscape or any combination of them where I want more opaque uh, kind of bright colors then I'll use the titanium white see look how bright I can make that mass uh, just using the titanium white now you may not want this effect with portraiture, and I usually don't. So that's why with portraiture, I use a transparent white, uh, like the lead white or zinc white. So I see kind of somewhere over here, uh, this little flower that's kind of hiding in the background. And so I'm gonna just paint it in as a simple mass right now. So let's just mix on top of this puddle here and add a little bit of alizarin crimson, maybe a little bit more and let's paint in this, uh, this little glimpse of the flower that's kind of hiding in the background. Now I'm going to go and build some information into this mass. So I'm going to switch back to the brush that I was using to start off blocking in the color. And now I'm going to go ahead and start to render. So let's just add sap green on top of this alizarin crimson here. It'll be okay, don't worry. So we're going to be using the alizarin crimson with the sap green to make kind of a rich, uh, kind of a rich and dark color. But, eh, maybe we'll add a little bit of cadmium orange, why not? So I'm thinking of this dark light. So let's just paint very direct here. So brush stroke per brush stroke. So a little mark here. I'm trying to create the dark light. And the dark light is this value here just as the light starts to reach the shadow. So this is dark light. So this is the area just as we start to approach the shadow. And now that is existing here, but it kind of looks like it's existing here, but this is more of a just a little penumbra. A penumbra right here. So it's kind of like, if you notice the shadow from my brush onto here, or even notice the shadow on my finger. You're going to see maybe some little glimpses of maybe a secondary light source here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, but that's what's going on here. That's what's going on right there. So there's a little bit of a penumbra here. 
Now I'm going to start to build more of the forms here, but actually I'm going to pick up the brush that I used for this, and I see a little reflected light there that I don't want to ignore. Now I usually don't go right into reflected lights, but I really like that color and it's kind of sticking out. So I'm going to use a Alizarin Crimson Cadmium Orange, and it's the reflected light being casted by the drapery. Uh, but I will say try not to uh, automatically pick the drapery color that's being reflected onto here and just say, oh, okay, I'll just put this color here. Nah, you might want to mix a color for the reflected light. So I'm using a kind of a diluted orange, so a little bit of uh, raw umber with the alizarin crimson. So let's see what this does. And I want to make sure that this value does not con uh, get confused with the values in the light. That's going to be most important. Uh, reflected lights are also a good area to change the hue. So that means change the uh, color itself and try to maintain the value uh, try to leave the value alone. So try to keep this area of the same value as this area, just changing the color. And actually that, you know what, that reflected light is down here too, just a little bit there. So now then, switching back to the brush that I was using to paint in these dark lights, uh, now let's start to build more of the volume. So I'm going to use a little bit of cadmium yellow. So let's start to create more volume now. So we're going to be painting planes now. Uh, so this is going to be a plane here. A plane is a, just a three-dimensional construct or a three-dimensional concept of an area in space. Notice my hand is receiving a lot of light. Now as I turn my hand further away from the light it starts to get closer into shadow. So you can picture each plane change around the still life object. So this plane is turning this plane right here is turning further away from the light, so it's getting darker. And as we do that, let's go ahead and uh, reevaluate this area of dark light. So the dark light is an area that's constantly reassessed. It's constantly, you're constantly trying to build on this transition. So now I'm going to use a different brush. I'm going to use the brush that I uh, painted the background color with. And I'm going to paint in this plane here now. So a little bit of the cobalt teal, titanium white. And again, I should mention, or I should have mentioned earlier, if you want to know exactly which materials that I'm using, which oil paints, the brands, and all of that, that information will be typed in the description box below. So just look down at the bottom and scroll down and you'll see the, uh, the oil paints that I'm using, the brushes that I'm using, as well as the panel. So there's a little light here. So I, I perceive it to be a little bit more on the bluish side. This right here looks a little bit more on the bluish side to me. Now up here, uh, I'm going to try and squint down, and by squinting I see that this area here, this whole plane, is lighter than this plane. Just trying to further sculpt out this shape. So I see that maybe this plane is lighter than that plane. So I'm going to take that into consideration now as I start to build some more of the planes there. So I'm going to use a little bit of yellow ochre and let's get into this area of the paint. So I'm going to take a little bit of the paint off of here and mix right here. So let's see. Now I'm going to make a mark. I'm going to stand back or sit back. And that's about right. Maybe it's a little cooler, so I'm going to add a little more cobalt teal into the mixture, a little more titanium white. I'm mindful of this relationship here, I'm maintaining the colors uh, close to one another on my palette so that I can compare them directly on my palette before I put them on the panel. Alright, so that looks 
looks about right. So this value is almost as close as this one, but it's a little darker. So now I'm going to let this value, I'm going to use a little bit of the paint that was already placed on there uh, to create a darker value right there. So this, though you can't see it, this edge is getting darker as it's turning away from the light. So I, I know that conceptually the object is going to be darker near the edges as it turns away from the light. Conceptually, I, I have that in my head. Optically, that's very hard to see. So sometimes you have to paint uh, a little bit of what you know into the still life and figurative or portrait or landscape. So now I'm going to utilize the layer that was already on the, the surface now to act kind of as a middle tone. See that? So I'm kind of like letting the brush strokes uh, create the turn of the form for me. So now at this stage it should be appearing to become three-dimensional. So this is the time now where we start to create something that looks three-dimensional. So let's push it even further now, going, bouncing back and forth between these two shapes. So I'm going to use a little bit of titanium white. So we're going to push it. We're going to push the form a little bit more now. Notice how this is a lot lighter than this. And so I'm going to use a little bit of cobalt teal. So I'm going to leave that be, so I'm going to say that might go there. So I'm going to go ahead and mix uh, the same color that was on the brush, but with a little bit of cobalt teal. And I'm going to squint down even at the palette to see if this is lighter. And I, I want that relationship to hold even if this is just a hair lighter. So here's this lighter area here. And it's over here too. Now then, I'm going to go and use this puddle here. And with a little less pressure, I'm going to start patting down on it. Starting from this corner here, so I'm going to start patting it. You can call it blending if you'd like. So this is how we're going to create a very smooth transition of values. See that? It's patting away to create more of a volume. Letting some of the brush strokes show. Now then I see a little bit of reflection even here. A little warmth there, so I'm going to add some cadmium orange to this mixture. And the cadmium orange is going to go about here. Now I don't want the value to change so much, so I'm going to take some of this off. And I'm going to apply some of this paint that was already on the palette. So I'm going to squint at the picture and at the still life object. And side by side, I'm bouncing my eyes side by side. So this is a little bit warmer here. Now I see a little bit of blue reflecting in there. So I'm going to use ultramarine blue and a little bit of cobalt teal. See a tad bit of blue here. So some of this is reflecting onto this. Some of this form is reflecting onto this form. And that reflection is going on even in the shadow. So I'm going to change uh, to a different brush here. So let's see what's on this brush. So this is about fine. So I'm going to use a little bit of cobalt teal, some ultramarine blue. Well, let's let this reflection continue onto there making sure that this is still darker than this because this is in light, this is, this is in light, this is not. Now I'm going to add a little bit of the uh, smaller shapes existing on this jug. So there's a little shape here, so I'm going to use a size 1 round brush and I'm going to just take some of this color off the palette and I see a little shape here now you won't really want to squint down at a time like this and, and try to take down only the most essential bits of information. So this is getting a little bit of a dark value here. 
and this is actually, uh, for at least from my vantage point, it's coming all the way towards the edge. This little shape here. Now I'm going to switch to, I'm going to get some of the blue off of here because I'm seeing some blue reflected onto there, or whatever that is, those things that look like wings. So just suggesting that form that's living there. And now I'm going to uh, start to add some of the highlights. So using a different brush, I'm going to use titanium white and cobalt teal. And I see, a, I see this highlight to be really blue and it must be reflecting uh, from my fluorescent lighting. So the light that I use to light my uh, panels or my paintings whenever I'm filming is the same light that I'm using uh, on the still life. So it's a little bit blue over here. And let's look at the shape of the highlight. It's about something like this. Makes a little hook looking shape. Maybe it's a little more blue, so I'm going to add more cobalt teal and a little more of the titanium white. A little more blue there. And this highlight is, of course, existing down here, too. And over here. And now there's another highlight over here. Now, to me, uh, this highlight is actually a little bit... Uh, warmer and that is because I actually have a cool light and a warm light on my panel usually when I'm filming my painting videos um, so we kind of have so I kind of do that so that you're not seeing a straight cool light on my painting or a straight warm light so I try to have a mix between the two uh, but that's what's giving me that cool highlight and that warm highlight which is kind of interesting so I used a little bit of cadmium orange and a little bit of cadmium yellow. Now I see that highlight just there. And a little glimpse of it down here. Oh, tiny glimpse. Now I see it very predominantly, so I'm going to add more of the white now. I see it very predominantly here. Two dots of light. One. Too. And those are reflecting from my clamp lights. I have uh, warm lights on two clamp lights in the back. So that's what those two lights are. And this big one is actually the, uh, a diffuse light that I have, the fluorescent one that I was talking about. So there's a little dash of light. A little dash of light there. And another little dash of light here. I'm going to come back into the outside shape a little bit later. I just wanted to build a little of the volume of the still life object. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, add some of some more of the red on the drapery. So I'm going to be cleaning off another brush with my mineral spirits. So the way I clean the brush is Here is my mineral spirits, and here is my medium. So I just dip the brush in there and then pat it dry on some paper towel. So that's what I'm doing uh, on this side of the camera here. So this is bright. This is very bright, very chromatic. Though it's not as bright as a stop sign, so I have to be cautious of that. So I'm going to use cadmium red with a little bit of ultramarine blue and I know that there's still some residue on the bristles of this brush uh, from the previous mixture which was this one. So that will also help me in terms of not making this as bright as a stop sign. So let's see, so there's a little light here. So let's think about the abstract patterns of the drapery. So there's a little shape that comes out here. See that? A little shape that comes out there. And this whole area is a plane. 
just a plane. And then it's getting a little darker over here, just underneath the jug. So I'm going to leave the dark that was already underneath of it, and I'm going to add a little bit of this color here. So I'm going to rest my pinky on the side here, a little bit of dark right there. That's an accent. That's an area where one structure, this structure, is meeting this structure, and this area is receiving almost no light, so that's what's making that dark. Here actually is uh, the drapery is wrapping over, so the foliage is wrapping a little bit over the still life object here. So compositionally, it's usually a little nicer um, when things overlap. So this is overlapping that, just so it doesn't look like this still life object is uh, cut and pasted onto there. So here we have another abstract shape. So I'm going to just be using cadmium red, knowing that it's going to mix with these shapes. And that's going to help me not make an overly saturated color. So the alizarin crimson. Let's try and get this shape here. This cuts into there. See that? Very simply with uh, just a few patterns of light and dark, we're going to get the effect of a three-dimensional foliage there. Just light and dark patterns. Very counterintuitive that it can be that simple. So let's use the alizarin crimson. And there's a little dark accent here too. And then it comes, it continues to come around here. Very simple. Now on the side here, it's going to be pretty light, but not that light. Red is a very deceptive color. It, because of its chroma, it, sometimes it looks very, very light, but it's not. It's, reds are usually very dark, uh, usually kind of like mid-tones. And uh, just optically, they look like very bright values or very bright colors to us, um, but they're usually not. And I tell you what, if you want to make an area of red lighter, such as this area, it's usually a good idea to go into cadmium orange. So orange is kind of like a light red, uh, because if you add white to these reds here, you're going to get a pink. And that, if you want that pink, that's, that's fine. You want to add pink, but I don't really see pink. I see a lot of reds here. So let's add this light here that's jutting out this little bit of light here. And I'm really um, squinting down and just looking at the big picture here. I'm not trying to copy down exactly what I see, but rather interpreting what's in front of me. There's a little bit of uh, traces of red down here, and it gets darker down there, so let's use a little alizarin crimson. A little alizarin crimson here. And so there's a little dark shape here. Let's use some alizarin crimson, some ultramarine blue. A little darker there. So let's use more cadmium red, cadmium orange, and it's a little brighter, more bright over here. Let's continue to paint this foliage in here. And now I'm going to sit back. So I see that this is still too, it's actually too dark. So I'm going to switch to this, um, this brush that I use for the highlight, add a little bit of my medium onto it. Let's take some of this here and let's just start to assess this value. So let's, let's see, so this makes a sharp edge here. And then with less pressure, I'm just patting again to try and get the uh, gradation of values just by the application of the brush strokes. 
That's a little better. So I'm going to take some of this blue, mix it onto here. Now I see that this now needs to get lighter in comparison to that. Very simply. Now then, let's get into some of these shapes. So I'm going to start off with the colors of the leaves. So I'm going to use sap green, so let's mix onto here. Sap green, ultramarine blue. Let's get some of the dark accents for the leaves now. So I'm going to actually close one eye and squint a little bit so I see that there's a shape somewhat like this from one leaf and a sharp edge there. And I'm going to do the same right here. See a little leaf, I see a little corner of a leaf folding in there. And then some dark down here. And there's a leaf down there. And of course, a leaf coming out from here. And a group of them coming out from this direction. Somewhat like that. Now then, with the same brush, I'm going to clean it a little bit with my mineral spirits. So just dipping it into the mineral spirits and then dabbing it dry on the paper towel. So now I'm going to use cadmium yellow and cobalt teal. Cadmium yellow, cobalt teal, and a touch of ultramarine blue. So there's a leaf here. I have to close one eye again. So there's a leaf there that's catching a fair amount of light. It's coming down like that. Somewhat in that direction. And I'm going to allow the paint to mix with, I'm going to allow this new addition of paint to mix with the previous one so that this area here is going to get darker. So notice this is one plane that's receiving less light, and one plane that's receiving more light. And that's how we can create a type of volume. I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to add cobalt teal, add yellow, some more cobalt teal, and a little bit of ultramarine blue. I'm going to squint down. I'm trying to pick out, so I'm sitting back, I'm leaning back, I'm trying to see the most useful bit of information here. And it's this leaf here, but I still want the background to be a little bit darker right there. So I'm going to paint a little darker uh, area for the background. So I'm going to clean off another brush. Let's try and get that value. So I'm going to use the ivory black mix into this area right here. So let's just utilize the paint that's already on here to mix that dark value. Again, it's not straight black. But it's pretty close to it now. So very dark here. So I'm going to, when I get into the flower, this is going to overlap with the dark. So it's going to be very useful for me to have this dark value down now. So let's look at the outside edge. Cuts in like that. Again, I'm letting some of the brush strokes show just for, just for fun. So let's fill in this dark now. Again, kind of applying it in a horizontal fashion just um, as I mentioned before, because of the glare, I don't want it to glare too much on camera. A little more ivory black on top of this mixture that's already existing there. And maybe a little ultramarine blue, actually. I perceive it to be a little cooler up here. So it's a little cooler up here. And that's just from my perception of the way that these colors appear. Now I'm going to use a fan brush. And someone asked me how I clean the fan brush, and thank you so much for that question. Uh, so I use a piece of uh, paper towel roll, fan brush. So I'll show you how I clean it. So I'm going to use this now to try to eliminate even more glare. Notice how it's eliminating a little glare, hopefully. 
And this is how I clean it. I just rub it on the paper towel. And that helps me to eliminate uh, or pick off some of the paint from the brush. It doesn't get everything, uh, but it gets enough for me to clean it. I usually don't use mineral spirits on my fan brushes. That's just because if I do, if I get paint on it, uh, this kind of thing happens where it gets like a rough edge there. And I don't really want a rough edge on my fan brush. So I'm actually going to, uh, while I have this mixture, I'm going to paint this edge now. So this comes maybe about here. And again, I want some of the brush strokes to show. And let's dark here. Now then, let's go back to that mixture that I had, and this, this might be uh, too bright, too light in color, and too high in saturation for that. So I'm going to go ahead and add more ultramarine blue into that mixture. Let's see, it comes to about here now, this shape. So the single brush stroke, so this is single brush stroke time, more pressure, less pressure, a little more pressure there. Single brush stroke time. So let's add some cadmium yellow now. And I see some light, just a glimpse of light there. Don't want too much. So let's go ahead and add the sap green, a little bit of ultramarine blue, and I don't want it to be this saturated. So let's take some of this off of that area. Why not just use what's already on the palette? So let's see, squinting down, there's a shape right about here. Single brush stroke time. It's a little more wobbly over here. So something like that. And there's a little leaf over here somewhere. Barely noticeable. Now then, I'm going to see, squint, I'm squinting now, seeing what's missing in this picture in terms of the big shapes. Right here, there's a dark that I need. So with the background brush, I'm just going to take what's already on here, and let's paint in this little dark shape here. As I squint down, I see this is very dark. So I'm painting what I see when my eyes are squinted, when I'm squinting. Trying to eliminate as much detail as possible and just see the big shapes. So again, even though my canvas is cutting this corner, I do know that this is going to be a little darker over here. Now let's go back to this green. I'm going to add a little bit of cadmium yellow. A little bit of cadmium yellow. I see a little light here. Single brush stroke time. And I think those are all the leaves that I see. Maybe I'm forgetting this, this guy right here. Uh, so tell you what, let's use the ivory black. Think of ivory black as a, uh, a, muted, a muted blue. A blue that's not very bright helps cut back on saturation and of course make the uh, values darker. So let's add a little more of that. So there's a leaf that's actually overlapping here. And I almost forgot that leaf. Somewhat over there. Now the background color. Let's see. Back to the ivory black, ultramarine blue. There's still a little dark here that I'm missing. Now then, let's get into some of the information into the flowers. So I'm actually going to use the brush that I, uh, I used for the information into the reds here. And I'm going to start to add some of the half tones 
of the flower mass. So we're really going to construct this with paint, a very painterly fashion. So pretty much just sap green, and uh, I think I used alizarin crimson on top of these colors, squinting down, and I'm going to paint what I see when I'm squinting down, and I'm sitting back pretty far back, and let's see, I see some half tones, or let's just say I see some shadows, I should have mentioned, I'm going to start with the shadows right about here. I see some shadow masses, ultramarine blue, or sorry, I'm using a lizard and crimson, and let's use a little bit of ultramarine blue. I see shadow masses right there. Gotta be careful, you don't want to put too much information for a flower. I mean, you can. All the power to you, but I try to get away with whatever I can, especially when painting a flower. A little bit of shadow here now. A very abstract, very abstract, just squinting down, looking at what's in front of me and trying to put down only the most essential information. So a little bit more alizarin crimson and some ultramarine blue. And we have this just a little darker. So I'm going to go back to the fan brush, clean it off a little bit, try to cut back on some of the glare. Now let's let's look at the surrounding shapes. So let's try to think of the shapes. A little shadow here. And so actually this area is a little darker than this area. So these shadows might be a little different. So I have to sit back and squint. So they are a little different. So I'm gonna add some uh, cadmium yellow into this mixture here. And I'm gonna try as much as I can to paint what I see when I'm squinting. So I see a little shape here. So let's just think about shapes. Now this whole scene here can be very complicated. Look at all these little shapes, all these little ridges and valleys. Uh, so let's simplify it. So I'm squinting down, just simplifying what I see in front of me. I see a little shape right here. Just look at the shapes. That might be too red. I guess some of the paint that was in the bottom was there, but that's all good because there was actually some pink there that I hadn't, I haven't perceived yet. And uh, there's maybe some touches of pink, so very light shadow here, I'll tell you what. So there's a very light shadow here, and that is because there's, see that? That's because some of the light coming from my, uh, my light fixtures is actually going through this area. So it's creating a shadow that is very light in value. So see this little shape here? Now then, I'm going to squint down again, maybe a little bit of this green, and there's maybe a little ripple over here. Got to be careful not to put too much in right away. You really want to see the big picture. All right, so there's a little more light over here. Sorry, this is a little bit darker there. Squinting down, squinting down, and I still see, I see some light shapes here that I'm missing. So I'm going to use the uh, this brush that I guess I used for this area. Clean it off a little bit. Again with the mineral spirits, just the mineral spirits. I use the mineral spirits to clean the brush and I use my medium with the stand oil to make the paint more fluid. That's how I use my mediums. Alright so a little bit of I uh, see, I perceive that to be a little cooler now, so a little bit of uh, cobalt teal into this mixture. So let's just mix right on top of these mixtures. So it's a little cooler, so a little cobalt teal onto these colors. And mixing on top of those colors is actually helping me uh, to create a more complex mixture. So see there's a little sharp edge right there. 
And then I really got to squint down because this is a very complicated array of shapes. So I see this shape here, squinting down. Uh, so remember this leaf I put here? There's a little light right there, almost right in front of the leaf. And I really have to squint down again to see how I can simplify this. So I'm going to go back uh, to the other brush, add a little bit more of the cadmium red, and I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue, some titanium white. Now see the paint's getting kind of kind of thick. This is a very loaded brush, so this is a situation where I would use my medium. Remember the medium described to you with the stand oil and the mineral spirits. So I'm using it, see that, just to thin the paint a little bit. So squinting down, there's a shape here. It's actually a little cooler, so let's use this with a little bit of the cobalt teal right here. So there's a cooler shape here as I squint. That is in shadow, but again, these shadows are really light compared to these shadows. Let's see, there's a shape down here. And a little more light. So I'm going to use now the brush uh, that I created these mixtures with. I'm going to mix on the bottom over here. So I'm going to utilize some of these colors to make some of these. So on top of this, I'm going to add a little bit of ultra, or sorry, get those confused, a little bit of a lizard and crimson. We get a very light pink. Again, I'm really squinting down to make these decisions. Squinting is essential, especially for this. And uh, I know that kind of might not be good for your eyesight. So if you don't want to squint down, uh, then just stand really far back. Stand really far back, or sit really far back. So now I see some light pinks here. Some touches of light pink. Very simple. And even more pink, so I'll add some more uh, cadmium red. So if you really want a nice pink, cadmium red and titanium white will do the trick. So a little more pink, even more cadmium red. A little more pink right about there. Single brush strokes. Now let's add some of the shapes that exist into that area. So switching brush now to this one. So this mixture that's already on the brush might be good uh, for these areas. No, it's not. All right, so I'm going to use some of the uh, mixture that's on this area of the palette. And I'm going to add a little bit of raw umber and some cadmium orange. Uh, so this value right here is pretty dark, maybe the darkest dark for the flowers, uh, except for this area, but pretty dark. Again, it's not as dark as this. So it's a dark and it's a warm value. And I perceive this to be a little more on the orangey side. So that's why I'm using the cadmium orange. And as I sit back, I still kind of think that this is going to need to get lighter. So I'll come back into that in a little bit. So a little more cadmium orange there. And uh, there's a nice dark, so I'm going to use some uh, raw umber into this mixture here that was used down there. See a nice dark over here. And um, might need to use a different brush, so I'm going to use uh, the size one round brush here to take some of this. I see a nice dark here when I'm squinting. Single brush stroke time. Try and get that shape to read at a distance. That's really what you want the most out of this is to get this to read from a distance. So I see a dark there and I see I'm going to add some alizarin here. So I'm going to utilize the paint that's already on uh, the surface here. So very uh, cautiously I'm going to create a little foliage here. See that? And when I say cautiously I mean I don't want to add anything that I don't need for it to read at a distance. But at a distance, there's a very distinct shadow here. It's 
something like that. Very distinct shadow there. A very distinct shadow here. I'm going to use the fan brush again. Clean it off with the paper towel. So squinting down. Really got to squint down for these flowers. Only trying to figure out the most essential bits of information. So I'm going to add a little bit more light. So let's uh, use this brush. Let's pick some of this off. Maybe a little bit more cadmium orange. Right here, there's some light here that needs to be described. Single brush stroke time. I'm going to clean off the brush now. A little bit of the mineral spirits. All right, back to this mixture here. I'm going to use a little bit more paint because the mineral spirits did thin the brush a little bit. And the reason I cleaned it was because it touched this color in the background, which is a nice effect. But I didn't want that color to trail into this area now. So again, squinting down, trying to get the most essential bits of information, the light mass here and there. So that is uh, pretty much describing to me at a distance uh, what is going on with the foliage here, that there's some area catching light here, uh, not so much light here and shadow there. Now that I see a little more light here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to switch to the brush that I was using before. Just pick some of this off. And I see just a little more light here. And I'm going to let it meet right about here. Right on the edge of the flower. So it may look one way to you, the painting I'm talking about may look one way to you, uh, five inches away, and it'll look completely different five feet away. And it's that five feet away that you want to read its best. And I'll tell you why. Uh, in a museum, if you're walking by in a museum and you see a painting, you're probably going to see it as you're walking past it, and you're probably going to see it five feet away, or ten feet away even. And that's why, that's that first impression that the painting gives you, and that's that impression that you want to be the strongest. Now, another way to look at it is a thumbnail, and this is going to be really important to someone like me. I want the thumbnail, so just a small image of this at a distance, to read its best. So now I actually see some reflection from this area being picked up right here. So I'm going to use the alizarin on top of this mixture here. And it's, this mixture here is going to help me uh, cut back on the saturation, uh, but I still think this uh, is too light. So I'm going to add some more ultramarine blue. Sorry, I mix them up all the time. A little more alizarin crimson. And so let's see what this mixture will do. Get that reflection to read. And that seems to be working out. So now I'm going to switch to uh, this little size one round brush. I'm going to go ahead and put in this dark line that I see here. And that dark line is just on the jug. Just barely, you can barely see it. Somewhat like that. And so there's some little traces of information there. So squinting down, what's the most essential thing I see there? Probably that this leaf needs to get bigger, but we'll get to that. So maybe a little touch of light here. A touch of light there. So one thing you want to watch out with, uh, watch out for is the symmetry. So you really, especially in nature, in nature things are very asymmetrical and that adds a lot of elegance. So this brush stroke, I don't want to mimic it in this area. So this one is at an angle coming this way. This one's going to be at a different angle and a little bit 
larger. So watch out for the uh, symmetry that can happen there. Now switching back to the brush that I used for the leaves, I'm going to go ahead and let's mix over here. So I'm going to use the cobalt teal and the cadmium yellow, a little bit of ultramarine blue, and let's see, maybe more ultramarine blue. And this leaf is actually a little bigger. Single brush stroke time. Kind of spin the brush here. Not single brush stroke time. It's that little blue, trace of blue there might be distracting. So I'm just going to pat it, smoothen it out. And I'm going to use, again, the paint that's already on the surface now to create, actually this is bigger. Now I'm going to use the paint that's on here uh, to make this little area of the leaf that is darker just by letting it mix what's already with what's already on here. And I'll even put in a little dark behind it. A little dark here. And I'm going to sharpen that edge there in the at the same time. Now looking uh, at the painting from a distance, I still see some light masses here that need to be further described. So I'm using the titanium white. I'm going to thin it down a little bit. So we're going to use titanium white and cadmium yellow. Just those two in a good amount of paint. I'm trying to use a lot of paint here light, there's some light over here that needs to be accounted for. So traces of light and much lighter over here. I have to really sit back and look at this at a distance. Some light here that's missing and depending on the application of the brush strokes I should be able to describe some of the uh, details of the leaves. So let's see. So this, this is creating a little shape for a leaf there, and uh, there's one here. So this shape here should start to create another illusion of another flower there. A little more paint. Let's see. I actually see a little more pink here. So let's switch. Actually, let's just use this brush. So let's add some of the cadmium red onto this mixture. And uh, squinting down, I just see a little more pink. Actually, yeah, a little more pink there. And I'm gonna really gotta squint down to see this. Try and see it as simply as I possibly can. So now I'm running out of brushes here, so I'm gonna use my the brush that I used for the drawing, that raw umber drawing in the beginning, and I'm going to uh, add a little bit of alizarin crimson and some cobalt teal in this area here. There's just a little value there. Might need to be lighter. Let's pick some of this up. A little value there. So let's add a little bit more light and some cadmium orange. And then it's a, li a little lighter there. Again, I need to make it a little darker, so more alizarin crimson, a little more of the cobalt teal. So let's see this dark here. It's about right. And while I have this, there are still, I was squinting down, there's still some shapes that can still be accounted for uh, right in this area. So there's a little bit of warmth in here. So just a tad bit of warmth there. Don't need a lot. Now then, I see that now that I painted this a little bit lighter, I see that this can be a little more red. So I'm going to clean off 
another brush here with the mineral spirits. A little more mineral spirits. So let's reach back to the cadmium red. I'm going to use a lot of paint now. The cadmium red and the alizarin crimson. Cadmium red and alizarin crimson. Okay, so I'm going to sit pretty far back and I'm going to squint down and yeah, there's a little light, a little more light here. Again, it's still not as bright as the red can go, but it's pretty bright. This needs to follow through over there. And less pressure will make it a little less dark, and that's how we're working with uh, layers of um, wet paint upon layers of wet paint. So I'll show you a little more cadmium red. Let's add some more, a brush stroke with a little more force here. And then less force down here, and even less force over here. See that? See how that's creating the kind of the illusion of the drapery kind of turning around? And I'm going to add even more alizarin crimson and use this area here of the palette. Maybe a little more alizarin crimson, maybe a touch of cobalt teal. And there's still a shape here that needs to be accounted for. Try to make it a single brush stroke, so less pressure right here, more pressure right here. Just let it look like it's coming or going underneath of this. So let's paint right up to the edge of this, lose some of that edge, and let's come back in with the uh, with this little brush. And let's bury the color just a little bit. So let's add a little more ultramarine blue. And let's vary this color a little bit. So I'm going to use my pinky to rest on the edge here. Let's vary this color a little bit. A little bit of color variation kind of helps to create the uh, illusion of the form, even if it's very hard to see it. And uh, after doing that, I have to sit back and assess any more bits of information that could be useful. And I think that there's still a little more of this shadow here that I could describe there. So I'm going to dilute the paint just a little bit on the same brush that I used for that. And a little more alizarin crimson. I'm going to need to add more, actually. I'm adding a little more alizarin crimson to this palette. Now that so the alizarin crimson and the ultramarine blue are the two colors of choice that I can think of immediately to create this uh, warm and dark color. Now let's see a little bit over here. So I have to stand back and see if that works. And it might be working. Now, you don't really see it there on the um, on the image. So let's just put this color, this shape right here. And this continues back here. A little more warmth there. Now I'm going to go back to the dark brush, this one here, I'm going to use this same mixture. Now remember I, I said that we would assess the um, outside shape here uh, once we added the colors. So let's do that. So I really need to stand back and see how these curves work. really want to make sure that this curve here matches with this curve here. And if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. You can always come back in and assess the uh, outside shape of a jug. This comes up a little bit like this. Just trying to make sure that they work. Another thing you can do, uh, especially with symmetry, since this has to be symmetrical here, 
is to look at it through a mirror. I'm actually going to look at it through a mirror. And they're pretty close. It's so hard to tell, but it might be blatantly obvious um, in the camera, but they look close. I use the fan brush again. It's so hard to tell. I think maybe this comes up a little bit. Oh yeah, and we have this. I actually lost some of this shape, so I'm going to go back, uh, let's say, to the brush that I used for the initial drawing. And let's get a little ivory black with some ultra, or sorry, uh, some old lizard and crimson. Let's see, let's get this shape back. And it's actually a little more blue there. Where is that coming from? So I see, uh, so let's use ultramarine blue and cobalt teal. It's actually a little bit of blue right there. Barely noticeable, but there's some blue there. All right, so back to the other brush. Let's try and figure out this shape here. Comes out about there. So edges wise, I want this to be my sharpest edge. So I'm going to go back to the ivory black on top of this mixture that's already there. And let's just make sure that this shape is as sharp as it can be. Sharpest edge there. Softest edge here and somewhere in the middle over here. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the side. So I'm going to use uh, my other brush here, the one that had the uh, dark mi mixtures initially. So let's go ahead and fill in the rest of this. So while I'm filling this in, let's let's talk a little bit about color. Um, so you can look at colors uh, optically, which is what I've been doing, just comparing one color to another color. Um, you could color match. So if you want to take a leaf, um, take a leaf off of this, take a flower off of that petal of flower put it on the palette, uh, you could then mix the color directly and get probably exactly what you're seeing in front of you. Uh, but I just, I don't like to do that. Um, I look at, I try to look at one color in relation to another color. And I try to continue to work in that fashion uh, where I'm relating colors to one another directly. So relating this color mass to this color mass, relating this color mass to this color mass. So that's, that's how I approach color. And still life is a wonderful uh, avenue to build on color. Still life can be very difficult, very complicated, uh, just like a landscape. But uh, if you can see just simple masses of color in relation to other simple masses of color, not, not unlike what the Impressionists did in the past, uh, you can really get some beautiful color notes. And color is a tool that's often uh, very elusive. And that is because, of course, uh, value that is how light or how dark something is. Value on its own is what creates form. Color, on the other hand, can really help you describe the effect of light. It can really help you describe the temperature of the light. See how we have some warmth and we have some cool notes there. And that is because of the double lighting that I have. So remember, I have a warm light and a cool light coming in the same direction.
So that's how I uh, perceive uh, color. That's how I make color decisions. I'm almost running out of the ultramarine blue now. And another thing you can do with color is, uh, now this might be kind of uh, a shock, but you can make it up. And uh, you have the freedom to do that. You have the freedom to make up a color change if you want to. Like I did in this area here, I threw a little more ultramarine blue there uh, than need be because I just wanted a little more ultramarine blue there. I just wanted it there. can kind of see it. If I really push it, I can kind of see a little a bit of a cooler color there. But not really. Not really. I just painted that in there because I just wanted it there. And I thought that it, having a little color variation there would help push the form. And the same thing just happened with the background. So there are some, some bits of ultramarine blue uh, that I mentioned before that are showing in the background. And that was on purpose because I want a little bit of variety in the colors, especially in the background. Another thing I'm going to do that may be kind of counterintuitive is I'm, I'm going to create a little angle here, see this? A little angle here of the foliage, and I'm going to let this rhythm flow all the way down here. See that? A little rhythm here. Rhythm. I'm going to let this go all the way up here. So you can also look for rhythms in the still life or whichever object you're painting. And I don't see it. It's not there. I really am not seeing it. But I just kind of want something there to break the flatness of it. So you really don't have to paint exactly what you're looking at ever. Paint what is in your mind. Paint what you perceive in front of you. And you'll find that that is a lot of fun. I'm not saying make everything up. I'm just saying once in a while just throw something in there even if you don't see it. Throw something in there because you want to throw something in there and you want to experiment with composition, you want to experiment with color, you want to experiment with brush strokes. Let's put in a big bold brush stroke right there. It's the experiment. So let's fill this in just a little more here. Again, I'm going to really leave, uh, let some of the brush strokes show. I'm going to leave some of the brush strokes alone just for the uh, aesthetics. I like to have some brush strokes showing. Now I'm going to sit back. I'm going to reassess now the entire picture now that everything is covered and that everything has uh, a good deal of information in it. Now after sitting back and assessing the image, maybe this angle that I was talking about, maybe it just is too made up, so let's put that down so it's a little better. Now squinting at it, there's still a little more reflected light here. So let's use the brush that we were using for the red, but not put the red directly in there. Uh, let's go ahead and mix in this area of the palette. And again, a little more cadmium orange and a lizard and crimson. For some reason, that red that's reflecting onto the shadow of this green appears kind of orange to me. And it's I'm looking at this and I'm relating it to this. So I'm bouncing my eye back from here to here to assess what color needs to fit in there. So let's see, a little more warmth here and a little more on the orangey side. Now I have to squint and see if that value still holds. And I think it does. I'm 
Now after sitting back, I need to assess any other bits of information that need to be added. Probably some information there, uh, but I'm just going to leave this as a shape, just a simple shape. Take some of this and then just refine it just a little bit. I don't want to do too much. So with the same brush, I'm going to take some of the red here, mix it into some of this green, and just some little notes here. See that? Just simple little notes. So we're going to do some final adjustments here. So after taking a break, uh, I came back and I see that I'm missing some of this shape here, and this flower needs to get a little bit bigger. Uh, so let's go ahead and make those changes. So let's use some of the ivory black, a little bit of alizarin crimson. So let's get some of this shape now. Uh, so this is actually a little bit further down like that. Comes up, maybe turns in like this, goes down, goes up again, curves inward, and turns like that. I'm going to make this curve in a little bit more like that, kind of mindful of the uh, symmetry. So I have two little bumps here and one bump there. I don't want this to be symmetrical with this. I want some asymmetry to go on there. A shape there. Squinting down, this might not be that tall. We'll cut back a little on this. And then maybe this cuts in a little bit more over here. Like that. Okay, now squinting, looking, sitting back. See that there's a little more an angle here. I really have to squint and look back. So I'm going to go back to the uh, uh, little small size one round. I'm going to come back in and get some of these shapes. Let's take some of this pink, a little light there some traces of light here. So now then let's get into a little more of this shape. So I'm going to clean off another brush. Again just with the mineral spirits and dabbing it dry on the paper towel. So this is the brush that I use for this. So there's still some red uh, some little residue of red paint in here, but that's all right. Uh, so let's use a little bit of raw umber. And I want something that's dark, yet a little bit warm, so raw umber. And let's use some cadmium red. And again, there's still some red left on the brush. So squinting down and sitting back, I'm really going to try and simplify this. So this comes further down like this. Makes a shape like that even further down, maybe to about there. This goes up like this. Let's see. So this actually cuts in more, makes a little shape like that. I'm going to add some of the warmth from uh, this puddle here. Let's get some of this dark here that we see when we're squinting. So that dark there. And the challenge is really trying to simplify and only put in the most essential bits of information. I'm going to clean off another brush. So I'm going to want a light brush and a dark brush. So with this brush now, I'm going to use the white and a little bit of the cadmium red and a tad bit of yellow ochre. Really have to squint down for these shapes. So this comes in as a little shape there. I'm going to use the fan brush. So again, cleaning it just with the uh, paper towel. Eliminate the glare. 
Now back with the dark brush. Get this little dark shape that exists there. Maybe there's a little glimpse of light there. Now let's see. The challenge is in the simplification. Again, let's just make this a little darker. So let's just cover this in preparation for the light shape. So we're going to paint on top of that with this mixture here that should be a little warmer. So let's use a little bit more of the cadmium red and a little bit of the yellow ochre. All right, so let's see. There's a light there. Don't want all your brush strokes to look the same either. So let's have this one have a little squiggle at the end. And again, there's a little more, let's see, a little more of a light existing right here. I'm going to go back to the shadow brush. Shadow right there. Expand brush again. These petals can be really deceptive. They're, they can seem really simple, like a single brush stroke created them. But to get that single brush stroke, that's where the work comes in. So let's just simplify it. Just see it as simply as possible. Let's see, this comes out a little further there. I'm going to clean off the brush a little bit as it picked up some of the background color, which is all right. This means we need to add more paint. So I'm going to use the cadmium orange. So let's get a little more of the paint now. Let's get this color. It's lighter and it's a little warmer. So a little more cadmium red and cadmium orange. Describe that shape. I'm still squinting down. I see possibly uh, that I'm missing a little dark right here. Now the trick is to conceptualize. Paint a conceptualized rendition of the flower. Don't try to copy the flower. You can spend months trying to draw the outline of the flower. Uh, but what we'll read as a flower from a distance is really just the simple shape. A little dark there. Actually, a little more cadmium red. See more of a dark shape maybe coming out from here. Paying attention to the shape. Flowers are very deceptive. And a little more cadmium orange now. I squint down as much as I can without destroying my eyesight. There's some warmth right here. So a little more warmth. Come back to the red from the bottom of the palette here, probably used for this mixture. Mix it in with this dark. Let's just reiterate that shadow shape. Just make sure that the shadow shape stays fixed. Put in this dark shape again. And let's see, there's a little more, a little more dark right about here. Squinting down, I still see more warmth in there. Let's just take some of the warmth from here, mix into here, and with a little more cadmium orange, still some more warmth in there. More cadmium red. So 
I'm going to go ahead and add some little glimpses of light. So cadmium red and the lizard and crimson with the titanium white. Still see some little traces of light there. Again, you really want to squint down for this. Or at least blur your eyes. I'm going to blur my eyes. Blurring my eyes, I still see more pink there. So let's go ahead uh, with the cadmium red on top of these colors. Add in that pink. And now with a touch more of the titanium white, I see a little, possibly a little more light emanating from here. Now sitting back, I see that there's a lighter shape here. Just a little light shape there. And here, that shape is still in question. So I'm going to switch back to this size 1 round brush. And I think it comes out a little further than I had it. So let's actually let it mix with the background. And I'm actually very thankful that I put in that ultramarine blue. It's mixing very nicely with this paint, this color that's on the brush. So let's clean the brush now. So I'm cleaning it off just with the uh, mineral spirits. I'm going to add a little bit more cadmium red back to the titanium white. I'm going to thin it out with my Stand oil paint thinner medium. Just thin it out a little bit. Little glimpses of light here. Very subtle. That's too blatantly obvious, so go ahead with a little more of the lizard and crimson. Something like that. A little light shape here. And some more cadmium orange. Really have to sit back to see this. I'm definitely at an arm's length away. Try and be at least an arm's length away if you can. So back to the cadmium orange. And then with the same mixture, let's put in a little touch of light here more pressure to make a thicker brush stroke, lift up, and then there you have it. Maybe a little more light over here. And I'm going to add a tad bit of the, uh, let's add some of the cobalt teal into this area. And just some few little brush strokes here. Now back to the background brush. Let's define the shape a little better. Got some here. It's actually some leaves on the side there. I'm going to edit them out. Something like this. Now I see that um, there's just maybe too much light or just too much of a straight brush stroke there so I kind of want it to be a little more diffuse so I'm just going to add some more light here and over here. And with that, we have the conclusion of this still life painting demonstration. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that this video helps you out, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.